everyone. This is day five of our walkthrough videos for externalities and public goods. We're going to be talking today about public goods. So we get class started with a class-wide homework pass auction. So we want to auction off, make sure everybody knows this is class-wide. Everyone will be excused from homework if um, the auction, there's a buyer in the auction, highest bidder pays you and, you know, they can pay cash or, you know, you can have them pay you through an app. Minimum price is a dollar, right? So if no one bids a dollar, then there's still homework today. So it's a silent auction. You have everyone write their bids down on a sheet of paper and submit them to you. So really what we want to see here, right? There's two ways this auction could go. It could be that you get that bid that's over a dollar, right? So you declare the winner and then you declare everyone else free riders, right? They're all free riding on the one person who is willing to pay above a dollar. Or, right, way two this goes, is that everyone else expected somebody else to pay, right? And so the bid doesn't go through and you assign them all homework. They're all attempting to be free riders and you got underproduction of the good. So then you talk about that scenario in the debrief. We introduce the terminology of a free rider. This, by the way, is one of our winning sticker designs from the spring uh, sticker contest. And then we talk about situations where free writing is likely to occur. So in this case, where a good is not excludable, anyone can get it, right? We use the illustration of the homework pass that you've just auctioned off. Then we have a great video for uh, public goods talking about asteroid defense as a public good, right? It's not excludable. We're not protecting only some people on the planet from asteroids and not for others. That's kind of not how asteroid defense would work. And like all of our other MRU videos, we've got some questions uh, for you to pause and check for understanding and make sure students are tracking with what's going on in the video throughout. So we give you those times of when you should pause the video, right? We want students to understand what non-excludable means. Um, it's impossible to prevent people from using or benefiting from a good, even if they're not paying for it. Um, and then at that end, right, we want students to be able to identify those two characteristics of public goods and really explain what non-rival means. Um, and then we give you some examples. So in addition to asteroid defense, you might think of lighthouses and Wikipedia as being public goods. We give you some uh, more detail on those examples. You'll notice that the lighthouse made it into our logo for um, this unit plan as a public good, right? So that was a historic one. The idea being that, right, any ship can use it for navigation, but uh, one ship's use of the lighthouse doesn't reduce someone else's. Um, but Coast has a great paper if you want to check it out on the private provision of lighthouses in uh, Great Britain. Okay, so then we move on to discussing uh, the provision of public goods, right? So thinking through, okay, who provides public goods? Right. So governments may provide public goods, but they don't have to. Right. So we might think of Wikipedia or YouTube as a public good. And they're not provided by government. Some government provided goods like library books and post offices are not public goods. Right. They're rival. If you check out a library book, somebody else cannot have that same book. Um, and then. Right. But we're solving the free writer problem through taxation. Right. And so here's some. Uh, problems we might want to think about of not getting the socially amount of public goods, right, because of rational ignorance or short-term bias, um, or the median voter might not really align with what would be an optimal provision of a public good. Then we introduce you to this nice chart. You have probably seen it in some of our videos where we think about, you know, whether goods are rival or non-rival, excludable or non-excludable, and where they fall. So these are the four main types of goods, private goods being, you know, the ones we talk about all the time, graph on a supply and demand graph, say, oh, the market is providing this, right? But then these other goods are ones we've been talking about where we have common resource problems. We talk about that in day four. Today, we're talking about public goods. And you'll notice we've got one more type of good we haven't discussed yet. Um, so that's up on the next slide for club goods. And so club goods are both excludable and non-rival, right? So if you want to privately fund a public good, you're going to have to figure out how to make it a club good, right? So you pay while streaming, for instance, and 
streaming services are non-rival in the sense that I can watch Ted Lasso and you can watch Ted Lasso at the same time, but they're excludable. You can only get in, you can only watch Apple TV if you pay for it. Um, we give you an exercise uh, with questions for students to think through um, the provision of public goods, right? Test their knowledge um, in different situations, right? A good is a public good. If it's provided by the government, you have to correct the true false question if it's false. Um, and we've got an answer key for you there. And then we have developed, right? We love a good interactive practice. Um, we've made one on these four types of goods. So we'll check that out for a second, right? You drag and drop based on what type of good you think it is. So a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. I'm going to say that's a common resource. Let's try that, right? And when your students get it incorrect, they get um, some elaborative feedback. What's going on there? What's the right answer? Why? Um, and then, you know, you keep moving. You've got multiple different examples, and it will show you your student score at the end. So you can have them submit a screenshot um, if you want to see, you know, whether there's a pattern of everyone missing a particular question. Then we have some discussion questions, right? So each one of these, we want students to kind of kind of think about um, whether they meet the two characteristics of public goods. Um, fireworks are commonly used as an example by economists of a potential public good, right? So it's hard to limit access to seeing the fireworks. And, you know, one person watching fireworks doesn't diminish someone else from watching fireworks. National defense is kind of the classic example of a public good where you're not going to just defend Joe and not Jane. But public education, while commonly referred to as a public good, right, perhaps in a newspaper, doesn't meet the economic definition of a public good, generally speaking, because it is likely rival, right? So if you have limited funding and limited school desks, one kid in a desk, some other kid can't be right there, you know, in the same desk. Um, and you can exclude students based on, right, whether they live in a certain school zone, right? Do they live in the right um, area for a particular school based on their age, based on, you know, characteristics like that. And then we can give you an exit ticket at the end of the day, right? Recapping, right? Driving home. What are those two characteristics? And then thinking about another um, scenario. So is a publicly funded transit system a public good? If you haven't already, you can request our unit plan, externalities and public goods. This is our fifth and final day in the unit. <laughs>